everyone, this is Domina Mara and welcome to my personal bedroom. This week is the final installment of my home transformation. If you haven't already seen my previous two renovation videos, you can check the cards at the end of the video or click on the links found below. Make sure you are subscribed as I upload videos or live stream every Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and hit that bell so that you can receive notifications on when. Follow my Instagram and Twitter accounts at Mara Domina and let's get started. I live in a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment and believe in separating spaces for work and another for rest and relaxation. As mentioned in both previous videos, I divided my home into body, mind and soul. My bedroom is represented by soul. This is where I lay my head to rest, where I do not think of anything work related and has all of my heartwarming tributes gifted from family, friends and kinksters alike. This is my sanctuary where I wake up in the morning and go to bed every night. I have named it the Gilded Room, as you can see why in a bit. I spent about $1,000 on total renovations and the least amount of money in my bedroom since I had most of the things that I needed already. So I probably spent about $200 in this specific room and let's go see what I did. The inspiration for this room was the simplest in the sense of color. I wanted it to be bright, so white was a major factor. I already had dark furniture, and it makes for a good grounding point to any room while blending into the background. Gold naturally adds warmth to any space, as well as shine. From the moment I moved in, I had a clear vision of where I already wanted my furniture, and I've taken the liberties of setting myself up with creative solutions. One example is after having a very large closet with multiple storage shelves in a previous studio rental, I reinvented the use of bookcases into additional exposed wardrobe space. Since I will be filming more and don't necessarily want people to focus on the contents of my storage, I decided to cover the bookshelves with the same layers of sheer black $2 panel fabric as seen in my sunroom makeover that can be used to either completely hide the contents or be parted in the middle to access my craft supplies, books, or casual wear. It's subtle, efficient, washable, and detachable with pins. All I had to do was buy a curtain track long enough to cover this area and screw it into the ceiling. My bed is the only thing that is a constant in this room. Lined with some fairy lights and above them are three circular wooden spirit boards laser etched with insects and sacred geometry. These are usable with gems and crystals to do energy work, however I've only used them for decor. My night table has stayed the same for over five and a half years with knickknacks and spiritual jewelry that I actually charge under the full moon when I pilgrimage out to the desert. These gold peacocks that are hanging are a gift from MP. I have enough lighting from my nightstand so I didn't bother with figuring the electrical components of this one. I requested them solely for the design to hang over my headboard. The wall to the left of my window feels blank, but one of the floral frames from my living room transformation actually fits here. I'll be featuring that wall hanging when I paint a new piece of kink-inspired art in the near future. 
Still, the corner felt empty, so I purchased these two gold hanging planters and staggered them. I got these faux green vines from the dollar store and after spraying them down with sanitizer, dangled the foliage from the edges of the bowls. Greenery just makes a space so much more lively. I picked up this Malaysian made dresser for $50 and it came with silver pool knobs. I liked the pattern but needed it to match the gold tied in both other spaces, so I unscrewed them all and gave them a couple coats of metallic spray paint. While they dried, I wiped down the surfaces of the dresser and set to work on the rest of the room. The ceilings needed to be covered to hide that hideous popcorn texture, so I bought more of the white tool as shown in the sunroom makeover. It took a couple of hours to line up what I thought was going to be a triad of drapes along the surface, but it ended up looking like a quilted stuffed pillow. Not only that, but white tulle is practically transparent, so I ended up running the material back and forth at least four times to make it somewhat opaque. After a day and night of sleeping under it, I decided to take it down. Instead, I purchased a less translucent chiffon type fabric to hang, and this worked much better. It did take another couple of hours to hang even with help, but it was worth it. I also wanted drapes along the wall above my bed, separating the dresser vanity area from the sleeping space. After the paint dried, I screwed the drawer pulls back on and moved the dresser to the far wall of my room where it fit nicely. An estate was gifting the side table and since there was a space between the dresser and my bed that could use a nightstand, I decided to pick it up and restore the top, which was lightly scratched with matte black spray paint. I had this LED cherry blossom tree from my first apartment, but it was in a box the whole time I lived in this place because I never had anywhere to put it. A golden fetishist had gifted me a smaller version of this that sits on my shrine in the living room, and I think of him every time I see it. The green lotus candle holder also matches the gold one that I have on my altar, as does the selenite tower which now creates a spiritual triangle with the altar and fireplace. I was in search for a filigree mirror but didn't want a boring rectangle or even a classic oval. This Sirocco mirror popped onto my radar and was $40. Shortly after, these Sirocco candle holders also came on the market for $20. I gave these a quick spray to match the gold closer to the mirror and to give them a bit more shine. The decor on the dresser had to be simple and mobile since I have different projects going on and want it to be easy to clear off for filming purposes. This globe is actually also an authentic functional sundial and came with the birdcage for $10 each. The brushed bronze on the globe was fading in many areas, but since I already sprayed the astrolabe on my living room altar completely gold, and I liked the dark look of this piece, I decided to brush a fresh coat of bronze metallic paint to accent the center ball, one of the rings, the arrowhead, the veins, the Roman numerals, and the base using the same acrylic as the living room dressers. I got this compass this year and also found out that it is also a sundial, a nice, more mobile and compact version of the globe that also points true north. The last of my LED lanterns from my short flow film Oracle rests here while its siblings are scattered throughout the other rooms. These candles were gifted by a Chicago fetishist when he came to pick me up from a spa treat after an exclusive weekend of fun. 
The shoes I need access to the most in my closet no longer had boxes, and they were unorganized all over the floor. Someone gifted me this extendable shoe rack, but it was silver and a neutral wood tone, so as you could probably guess, I spray painted this with gold metallic paint as well. It fits snugly, and all of these shoes are now accessible. Speaking of the closet, I had to cover the white with something because it just looked like a plain wall, so I got white marble contact paper rolls with gold flecks distributed throughout. The seam is much more apparent than the one in the sunroom, but it wasn't as noticeable on camera. Some of the edges started peeling after a night of being on the wall, and even after I cleaned the surface down because the paper was rolled the opposite way. I used a small iron and some extra glue to heat it down, and that worked without burning anything. Lastly, I used a brown-gray pelt from my shoemaking friend's bundle of gifted materials, and it fit perfectly in front of my dresser. Above my closet is a horizontal area that I felt could hold a broad sword. I have a Japanese katana in San Francisco and wanted a European style, so I purchased this beauty to hang when I'm not using it for badassery. The brass hooks were $15, and the sword was $38. To the left of the closet was a stepped wall area that I thought could be used vertically. I had a lot of canes, whips, and riding crops that were propped against the wall previously, so I sought out a tall vase that could hold all of it. I found this lightweight floral silver metal vase for $15 and sprayed it with gold metallic paint. It now makes for a beautiful home to my long implements. While I was cleaning, I found this old drawing study I did for tigers for my portfolio while still in school. Not bad for freehand. Speaking of cats, I've had this cat poster since 2014, and after six years, I finally decided to hang it. Finding a frame that fit this poster without too much white space around the cat was a challenge. I finally found one that was 17 by 21 inches for $5. It was such an old frame that it had these removable metal adjusters in the back to hold the glass in. This piece really needed a new coat of paint and cardboard backing for support since it was the original. After spraying the frame matte black, I wiped the glass down and had to use acetone on the edges to remove the aqua acrylic that had bled from the previous hand-painted trim color. I then used it as a stencil to measure the new piece of cardboard and cut to size. Regular scissors could not do the job, so I took out my trusty self-healing mat from art school and used a sharp blade. After that, I centered the poster and did the same thing. Since I wanted to hang this piece vertically instead of horizontally, I had to cut the wire, unscrew the eyelets, and shift them to the other sides of the frame. I had help with this part.
liked the trim as a decorative element, so I decided to make it pop by painting it a couple coats of gold with the same acrylic used for their living room dressers. When it was complete, I hung it over a full-length mirror that also served as a jewelry and accessory holder that I've had for a few years now. The kitten looks adorable like it's peeking its head from above my mirror. I inherited this small dresser from a friend before she moved, but it was too small to fit more of my clothing, as you can tell from the piles around and on top previously. I always wanted it black to match the rest of my furniture, so I sprayed it with two coats of matte paint before moving it across the room next to the bookcases. Since I have a lot of athletic wear, I decided to make this dresser solely for that purpose. It's difficult to open the drawers sometimes, and similarly to the living room dressers, I broke many nails in the past. I had extra handles from the living room dresser pulls and left them black after installing them. More screws were needed as the wood width was different from the living room dressers. That cost under $2. I put all my medium-sized accessories, such as my gloves, my sunglasses, my hair pieces, in black boxes above the dresser. I've had this ancient world map since I graduated from university, and I mounted that on the wall. After winning Ice Queen slash Ice Princess, most intriguing foot model earlier in January of 2020, I framed my award and used removable wall strips to hang it onto my shelving unit. The top of my dresser felt a little empty, so I pulled out my photo album of my past portrait sets and picked one to fill this new gold frame I've had for years. At first, I thought about putting it on the night table, but decided to place it on my petite dresser to make it feel more personal. One of the piles that I had in my home were of my headpieces for dance. Check out the red fan headdress I made along with my Goddess Mara channel, found linked in the description box below for reference. I did not want to shove these in the closet in fear of crushing them, so I took panels of gifted salvaged wood and measured them to fit above my small dresser and clothing rack sandwiching the bookcases. I didn't have a circle saw to cut these to size, so I posted an ask on social media. Out of the people who replied, I chose the person who lived the closest to me, and we scheduled the day to meet, wearing masks of course, and keeping distance. I asked how we had met since we were connected, and he told me that he had met me at the Dungeon West Open House one year, as well as Stockroom's grand reopening. Such a cool surprise. I gifted him a French soap bar and returned home. The holes needed to be filled, that's what she said, so I used spackle and a disposable wooden chopstick to apply. When dry, I used fine grit sandpaper to make it flush to the board. Since the dark wood one was already varnished, I scratched the surface with a coarser sandpaper so that the paint I was going to apply would stick. I wanted to try painting these with a quart of black paint I got from Home Depot, but the coverage was not as even as spray paint. Dust particles stuck to the surface and were really apparent in the light. So I went over the top with a thin coat of matte black spray paint. I had a total of three shelves just in case. The long shelf was going to sit above my petite dresser, so I decided to paint the edges gold to give a fleck of shine, matching the vanity accents across my room, and to tie it in with the rest of the space. The edge of the medium shelf had a lip and was thinner and was going to be placed in the far corner, so I just left it solid black. I didn't end up using the glossy shelf since the longer other two fit the mannequin heads nicely by themselves.
Originally, I had wanted to try using removable wall strips to hang the shelves since they were supposedly able to hold up to 16 pounds. It didn't work with my 15 pound shelf. MP sent me these L brackets and I painted the lower part with white acrylic so that it would blend into my wall. I bought a pack of small screws for less than $3 from the hardware store to fit the shelves and painted over those as well, respective to the white of the wall and the black of the shelves. These mannequin heads that I got from a Chinese supply store online shipped them without padding so they looked like they had been abused by the mail. I sent them photos and they gave me a refund on half of them. The total cost after returned payment was $9. The ones that I did end up using looked good under the billowing canopy. To the right of my door was a narrow strip of wall that I felt could use a little sparkle. I purchased this $15 gold metal moon phase hanging that fit in the space. But before I got to hang it onto the wall, I found Ariana Ost who designed these moon phases with crystals between each phase. These were retailed at $120. Thus, I decided to make my own with these raw gems I got for $2.50 per pair of crystal quartz, rose quartz, and tiger's eye. I already had gold jump rings in my crafting stash, so I just took a pair of pliers and after laying out the design I wanted, attached the gems by their gold pendant holders. I made this in five minutes and finished off pinning my custom version of this decor with a gold thumbtack. One more thing I added was to the right of the entrance to my bedroom where there was a narrow wall area. I had this gold foil print for years but never framed it. It just so happened that a neighbor was moving and had a brand new gold frame still wrapped in plastic that she wanted to part with. I bought it for $5.
it fit and matched the print perfectly. I also got these set of three white marble gold hooks for $10. I eyeballed underneath the hustle frame and hung my basic pair of leather floggers and bullwhip so that it is easy for me to take to the living room to practice now that I have the space. And without further ado, let's reveal my bedroom. That concludes my home transformation and I hope you all found these makeovers inspiring as we continue to buckle down in our spaces. I've linked my previous room makeovers in the end card. After this video, don't forget to subscribe, then hit that bell so that you know when my 2019 Europe tour vlog comes out. It's super epic. Thanks to all the subs who contributed to make this renovation a reality. If you would like to make a donation, email me at mara at dominamara.org as I have many more projects in store. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it so that others can view my living space makeovers. Comment below on what your favorite room is or what your favorite decor piece is. And until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep it kinky, everyone. Thank you.